G'day everyone, hope you're well. Round six, it has snuck up on us, it is fair to say, but who wins and why, that is what is coming your way. If you haven't subscribed yet already, number one, why not? What are you missing out on? You're missing out on everything fabulous that's coming out of Daz Talks Footy. Let me tell you, it is a new wave of footy content that is coming your way. So click that subscribe button. If you like the video, click that like button. Helps with the algorithm. Helps more people see it. Makes a massive difference. Helps me. Helps you. Helps the world. Just click that like button. Not that difficult. But who wins in round six? All those questions are about to be answered. Let's get stuck into it. Leon Cameron's already coached in the grand final. In this game, he's coaching for his job. It is really hard to see how the Giants lose this game and Leon still be the coach in 2023. Now, I know a lot of mainstream media are like perplexed on why Leon Cameron's job might be in danger. Clearly, they're just not figuring out that a list and an organization that's this good and been helped this much hasn't quite got over the line. It, it is like the NFL. This does remind me so much of the LA Rams how they were so good, they had Jared Goff, the man in charge, the quarterback in this situation, they got to a Super Bowl, GWS got to a grand final, they didn't win it, they weren't quite good enough, the same as GWS, and the LA Rams eventually went, I don't think we're going to get back there with the main man in charge, they traded Jared Goff for Matt Stafford and other picks in the hardest division in the NFL, Matt Stafford and the LA Rams went on to win the Super Bowl this year. It would be hard on Leon Cameron, of course, but if there is any club out there that doesn't believe their coach is going to win a flag, fire them. That's the whole point of this game. Is it harsh? 100%. But that's the business we live in. There are only 18 of these jobs available, but enough of that rant. Who wins this game? St. Kilda have been fantastic this year. I have doubted them a lot, and they continually prove me wrong. So for the last time this year... I am tipping against St. Kilda, but for the first time this year, it's not because I don't think they're good enough. I think St. Kilda want to win this game to continue their momentum. I think GWS need to win this game. For, for that reason, and that reason alone, I'm tipping GWS. Toby Green is back. I hope it makes a big impact. He owes that footy club an absolute shitload. I think he gets it done. Canberra, it's a good ground for the Giants. They've got a good record there, so... Everything's kind of going against the Saints at the moment. And if they're good enough, which they are, they should absolutely roll the Giants. I just think the Giants have got a bit more to play for, and that's why I'm picking them. This has all the makings to be one of the most boring games of footy ever. For two reasons. One, these two teams don't usually play good footy against each other. There haven't really been a lot of Bulldogs, Crows, blockbusters since prelim finals in the late 90s. So there hasn't really been a whole lot to get excited about. It's at Ballarat, you know, ill. Not Ballarat ill, but Ballarat for footy. I get that it's good and it's a good partnership, but the wind, the cold, it's it's footy. Like, it's tough footy. Is it going to be the most watchable game? I'd argue no. Is this going to age really poorly? Probably. And as much as I'm impressed with the Crows, they're two and three, but two of those losses by under a kick. The Bulldogs, they lose this. It's done. Absolutely season over. So for that reason, I'll take the Doggies. Their midfield should also be too strong. I wonder if there are any Sandful or lower grade Adelaide teams that are looking for a coach because if Port Adelaide lose this, Ken might be coaching one of them. Now, 50 points down against Carlton. They came back. They should have won that game. They didn't. If they can't beat the Waffle side, and yes, the Eagles are going to get some players back, I understand that, but Eagles are nowhere near their best. Nowhere near it. They are further from their best than any other team in the competition, except for the guys they're playing. But Port have to win, right? Right? Like, yeah, Port have to win. Port will win. I do not feel good about this, but Port win. <laughs> This is a belter. This is an absolute belter. I'm so looking forward to this game. Carlton are doing everything right and wrong at the same time. I think it was Sammy Edmund on 11-16 who said that Carlton are the only team that are either jet skiing... Oh, sorry. They are going down a mountain with a jet pack on their back. And once they start, they just can't stop. Or they're climbing a mountain with thongs. 
That is an outstanding metaphor. And Carlton fans, you're four and one. I don't know any of you who have good mental health after all this. It's insane. But what a start it's been for the Blue Baggers. And the Dockers, they're the only team in the competition to not lose a fourth quarter. And Carlton are one of the worst second half teams of the year. Considering the fact that Carlton are going to have to play four quarters away from home. And Freo can end the game really well. I am going to go with the Dockers, even though Hayden Young and Heath Chapman are in health and safety protocol. I understand that. I really do. And yes, they are big losses, but this is really a backing of system versus talent. And I'm going to back Frio's system until they prove me wrong here. Justin Longmuir is doing a fantastic job. And what a midfield battle this is going to be. Walsh v. Brayshaw. Amazing, yes please. Sarong v. Chera, oh, so good. Patrick Cripps is flying over, but it's unlikely that he'll play, and that makes sense, but he is going over with the team, according to reports, and that's cool. I feel like if any tip's going to go wrong the most, it's going to be this one, but I think we've got to give Freo credit for the way they've started, so Freo for me. Geelong. Contrary to popular belief, I love the Q Clash. There's a history there that I think goes under the radar of a lot of media organisations and perhaps fans. These two teams don't really like each other. Brisbane have got the success and then had a down period and are now back up again. Gold Coast are still finding their feet after 12 years. Think of that what you will. Brisbane are the better team. Brisbane are going to win the game. But does Matt Real try to play a cooling job on Lockie Neal? Can we finally let him go free? He can win the Marcus Ashcroft medal, Matt Real. He can have 35, kick a couple at his best. We just haven't seen him at his best since round one. And that's not good. But Brisbane easily for me. Richmond are the kind of inconsistent team that could bob up, beat the Ds, everyone thinks the dynasty is back, and then they disappoint us yet again. That can absolutely be on the cards, and part of me kind of wants to back it to happen, but I made a rule to myself, I'm not tipping against Melbourne until they lose a game, so whilst it wouldn't surprise me if Richmond win, I can't claim credit if they do win, because I'm going to back out of it and tip the Ds. Richmond's defense right now is looking... Uh, yeah, Richmond's defense is looking really bad at the moment. And with their tall backs not playing anywhere near as well as they should, I expect Melbourne's talls to go bunter in this one. If you had have asked a Hawthorne fan two years ago, how could you win a game without Mitch Lewis? They would have had answers. They would have thought there's a good mix of forward talent. They might have said there are other talls that are better at that point. Fast forward to round 6, 2022. Mitch Lewis hurts his hamstring, and the Hawks can't beat the Swans that way. The big, tall target. Every team needs one. Hawthorne right now do not have one. Coming from one of the better injury lists in the league, Ned Reeves and Mitch Lewis are probably the two that they could least afford to lose. Although, Max Lynch should hopefully come in after recovering from a bee sting. He is allergic, so this isn't like a, oh, it's just a poor little bite. You'll be right. He, it, it is a pretty bad allergy, so we do wish him all the best. But he should be in the side this week for uh, Reeves. Who comes in for Lewis? Is it young Jackson Callow? Who knows? Do the Hawks try and play small ball? and do it that way, it'll be interesting to see. I don't record this when team lists are out, so I look forward to finding out. But the Swans, they're in devilishly good form, and like I said in my review video, I don't think they're as good as their West Coast form, because West Coast are not a very good team, but they're not quite their North form either, in which they were just severely off. They were somewhere in the middle, and that should be too strong for the Hawks. But as a Hawks fan, I would be absolutely thrilled with the 3-3 three and three start, as long as it's not like the St. Kilda game and they get blown out, I can live with that, but the Swans win this one. By every metric, by every number, by every statistic, by every eye test, Collingwood should win this game easily. I'm not sure they do. I'm actually going to tip the Bombers. There is something about seeing the resolve in a group that is really fascinating to me. So if I put a little bit of emotional investment in the Bombers here, and they let me down... Their review is going to be harsh, real harsh. If they do not put up a fight late in the game, they are in big, 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 big trouble. 
But the reason why I think they win, they get up. It's a big game. And a bit like the Hawks in a way. Not that I'm saying they're exactly the same. But when you don't put up a fight in a game you absolutely should have, it's all about the first 10 minutes. Hawks had kicked three goals in six minutes before the Cats had touched the footy. Essendon need a good, strong start as well and carry that momentum through. The Pies, good young side. I do like watching the Pies play. They're better across every line. But I'm going the emotional. I'm going with the Bombers. So they are all the tips, guys. As you can see there, what do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Who are you tipping this week? Comment below. Let me know. Who do you think is in for an absolutely massive game across the weekend? Me... I am going to back in Bailey Fritch. I know I said the Tolls from the Demons are going to go nuts, but the Fritzel is both good in the air and on the ground, and I'm actually going to back him to kick a handful. Five for the Fritzel. That is my pick there. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I can't wait to see you again. The Supercoach video, I've had some trouble uploading, although if you are seeing this and it's already uploaded, then you can just ignore me here. But if it doesn't get up... I have gone the double upgrade, and I'll put it in the comments below if the Supercoach video hasn't uploaded. Having a bit of trouble there, but hoping to fix that ASAP. And what else I'm hoping for is that you guys have already subscribed. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope you keep being the fantastic, absolute fucking legends that you are. I'll see you for the review, guys. Goodbye.